and welcome to In His Presence. I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and we've got a word for you today. You know, when you're a faith church and you talk faith all the time, people think, well, how's God going to talk to you or correct you or whatever? Well, I'm going to talk about that today, the chastising of the Lord. You know, let's go to uh, Hebrews 12, uh, 5 through 11. Now, that is right after the uh, great faith chapter, cha uh, chapter 11, Hebrews 11. And that's one, the one that has, by faith Abraham, by faith Isaac, by faith Jacob, by faith Joseph, by faith Moses, by faith, by faith, by, through faith. So it's, it's all about faith. But then you get over here to uh, chapter 12, Hebrews 12, and he talks there about the chastising of the Lord. So it's something we're going to talk about today. A lot of people don't know what chastising is, and we're going to find out today. So this is God's word on chastening. Uh, God will not chastise you through sickness, disease, or an accident. Now, John 10, 10 says it's the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I think, wow, you know, that's wonderful because that's what he's given us and that's what we have. So he only chastens through the word. And we need to realize that physical circumstances will not change us personally or spiritually. The chastening of the Lord through the word develops us spiritually. It changes us from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Okay, let's go to John uh, 6, 63. John 6, 63. It says, it is the spirit... That's the, the, the person in here, the newborn person in here. That's where the Lord talks to you. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Praise be to God. So we need to realize that. So it is the spirit, the Holy Spirit quickens through the word. Spiritual life is wrought in us. And the Bible says, let's go to 1 uh, Corinthians 2. Uh, verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, nor are they, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So we can see that spiritual things are taught through spiritual channels. That's the way you receive from God. God's a spirit. And when he talks to us, he talks to us by the spirit. Okay. Now, have you noticed though that most people uh, who label their problems on God's chastening never change? <laughs> they never change. They never grow spiritually. And they still have the same views year after year. So if a person is in touch with God, he's going to change. I'm telling you, he is. They'll not stay the same. They'll keep on changing from day to day, from glory to glory. Granted, now if you do get hit by a car, <laughs> you will or should call out to God. But God didn't cause that car to hit you. You got yourself, you maneuvered yourself in the wrong way, in the wrong place. You know, I remember, because when I grew up, I grew up in a church that, that taught that the chastisement that God chastised us with was in the physical realm. So, chastise does not mean to punish. Remember that, say that. Chastise does not mean to punish. It means to instruct, 
to teach, guide, bring up and direct the right way. Now, isn't that something? I'm going to say that again. To chastise does not mean to punish. It means to instruct, to teach, guide, bring up and direct the right way. Praise be to God forevermore. Now, let's go to Isaiah um, 50. Three, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. It says, Surely he's borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, and yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes... We are healed. Praise be to God. So he bore our uh, sicknesses and disease. He bore our punishment. But, you know, we still have to be instructed. You know, a child, if he's trained, you can't instruct a child uh, because in time they'll be maladjusted. And that is so true. So we have to realize he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Praise be to God. Okay, as we endeavor to act on the Word of God, uh, weak points in our character begin to leap up and be very evident to us. And uh, so the chastising of the Lord will produce Godly sorrow, godly sorrow that leads us to repentance or change of mind and heart. Uh, I think that is so neat to know that when you, when the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, uh, it will change you. Your, your heart, you will have a uh, godly sorrow. It will be a godly sorrow. And so it will lead you to repentance. So... Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, 7. Okay, okay, where is it? 7, 2 Corinthians 7, verses 8 and 9. Uh, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repent, repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So he will absolutely, uh, when, when he uh, comes against you to show you where you've done wrong, where you need to be uh, instructed, he will instruct you. But you'll have to uh, you'll have to do it by uh, repenting and uh, asking him to forgive you, and he will. It is amazing. Now, so uh, trials expose weaknesses in our character. That's what trials do. They will expose weakness in your character. The chastening of the Lord develops us so we can overcome the weak points that the trials expose. Trials do not develop us. They just expose our weakness, our weak points. And so that is good to know that you can take control. Now the Word develops us, develops our strength within our character. And uh, it produces righteousness and holiness. Let's go to Hebrews 12, back to Hebrews 
uh, Hebrews 12, 11. It says, Now, uh, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by it. So that's your spiritual qualities that it's, it's absolutely working on. And um, as far as standing before God, you can't get more righteous, but his chastening is so that our external being and our soul begin to uh, project more of what he has done on the inside. His aim is to change your thought pattern and the way you are. I, I tell you, I don't know if you realize it, but if you will just stop and think of what you maybe you think when you go to bed, before you go to sleep, uh, is there something that you can do to change uh, the way you think? Yeah, I think so. He's telling you he's wanting to change your thought patterns, which will change the way you are and the way you act. He takes away and adds to. As the chain comes, we're not to faint in our minds. Fainting is a lack of repentance. After God re reveals the weight of sin, we are to repent and run the race. Hallelujah. No chastening seems for the present to be joyous, but grievous. As circumstances come your way, you have to simply overcome them. That's what you do. You overcome them. Don't let them push you around, but you push them. You know, I can think of happy, me and happy in our walk of faith when we started this church and when we went into the ministry. And you know, we didn't have, we didn't have anything, uh, anybody supporting us at all. It was just something that we felt led to do. And so we did it. But I tell you what, we had times that we had trials, we had all kinds of things, but I want you to know we grew. <laughs> we grew, we really did. So. Don't let weak points uh, push you around, but you push them around. Now, the weak points could be you didn't believe God would do what he said he would do. You just didn't believe it. The devil tries to prove God's wrong. So we don't want him to do that. And if it's against the word of God, then you'll know right away. That couldn't be God. He's not going to talk against his word. He's just not. He's a God that doesn't lie, and we need to realize that. So weak points could be a lot of things, but uh, we sometimes don't believe that he'll do what he said he'll do. And so we see the chastening is for the sole purpose of teaching us, teaching us. So God is for us not against us. So you can see that chastening of the Lord is for the sole purpose of teaching us. So God is, is for us and not against us. Many people think God and Satan work hand in hand. They don't. They don't. God doesn't need the devil uh, to find out about us. He made us. <laughs> he knows our hearts because he made us. He made our hearts. So the devil is out to destroy us and steal the word out of our heart. That's what he wants to do. We just can't let him do it. And I, you know, I said a while ago, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's exactly what he has done. And that's exactly what he will do. Now let's go to uh, Luke, Luke 9. Luke 9:54 through uh, 56. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, 
They said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what matter of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. And they went to another village. So we see right there that James and John <laughs> wanted to call fire down from heaven and, and consume them, destroy them, actually. But what did Jesus say? He rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit you are of. So when we say that God is, is burning down houses, uh, tearing down towns with tornadoes or hurricanes or floods, sending cancer and disease. We don't know what spirit we are of. We need to remember that. That's one of the main reasons I'm teaching this is because people don't know when they blame these things on God that that is not God. He doesn't do that. He is a good God. He's a God that doesn't lie. And when you realize that every time you read the Word, just think to yourself, my God does not lie. Whatever He says is truth. I believe it. Praise be to God. Now, Jesus made it clear in verse 56, for the Son of Man is, has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So, we know that He is wanting us to, uh, to live a long life. That's just exactly what it means. So God's desire is for us to live a long life, as it says in Psalms 91, with health and prosperity until we realize that problems are contrary to God's Word, and we will never grow until we really know that. Now, when the chastisement comes, uh, we need to repent. And you know in your heart when it's a godly sorrow. I mean, you know. So what do you do? You have to, first of all, you have to change. You have to change. And God, because God, <laughs> goodness gracious, I got a sneeze. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> because God will not change us. We have to do it ourselves. And uh, He'll be there, and you ask the Father to forgive you, and what does He do? He forgives. He's so precious. Then we repent, turn around, and change, and say, I will act on your word, Father. I think that's beautiful. When we repent, whatever sin that we have been uh, taken up with or whatever is uh, causing us to to do things that we shouldn't do and we we think I've got to I've got to stop this well you do that you do it you do it by uh, changing yourself you ask the father to forgive you and he forgives that is what's so precious about our father God now judge yourself Judge yourself. Yes, I do need that. Thank you. These people here are so precious. <laughs> They're going to take care of me while I'm teaching. Okay. Let's go to 1 Corinthians um, 11, 23 through 32. Now, this portion of Scripture reveals what uh, Jesus uh, has, has said for us. He said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or die prematurely. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So I think that is, that's the end of this part here. It's where you do all this and the Spirit of the Lord will uh, talk to you and uh, it'll re reveal that being ignorant of Jesus' death and resurrection can cause problems in our lives. Therefore, we need to examine ourselves to see if we are discerning the Lord's body and appropriating the elements of forgiveness and healing. If we don't, I think we bring to ourselves uh, damnation. Now, I don't mean eternal, eternally lost, but judgment will come. So we need to really o open the door to uh, the chastisement of the Lord because he said in verse 29, he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. And that over there in my marginal re reference says judgment. So not discerning the Lord's body because verse 27 said, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily, and I've heard a lot of people say what they think that is. Um, I know I have thought that it may be um, unworthily could be they're not born again. If you're not born again and you're drinking of this, uh, his body and his blood, you are not you're not being forgiven for things. He says, but let a man examine himself and then let him eat and drink of the, of the bread and the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And I tell you what, he said there in verse 31, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. I like that. And that doesn't mean that we are eternally lost, but judgment will come because we open the door for sickness and sometimes death. Now that's pretty strong, but you have to realize that don't ever, how important Jesus' word is. And he tells us to do this as often as we gather together and different people, you know, have that, uh, they do that at different times in their church. But we, I think we do it once a month. And that way, I think it's his first or second Sunday of the month, we do it in our church. And I tell you what, I make sure that all of my sins, I have confessed and I am believing for God to deal with me and help me, and he does. Praise be to God. Don't ever take communion until you have judged yourself, not others, but yourself. Praise be to God. <clears throat> now lastly, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 3 verses 11 and 12. My son, despise not the chastening 
of the Lord, nor uh, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. You want to be happy? That's what you need to do. You need to absolutely get in touch with him by the Spirit because really there's nothing that you can do. He says to despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. So I just think it's a wonderful thing to know that the Lord will absolutely lead, guide, and direct you with the palm of his hand. He will direct you. If, if there's something that you're thinking, if there's something that you're doing, if there's something that you're, you don't know about, ask him to reveal it to you through his word. And he will. He really will. And when he does, then you'll, you can ask for forgiveness and, and, and change. You can step up a step into a, a better place. And, and that's what he wants to do with you. And that's what you have to allow him to do. You have to allow him to change you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. I like that. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Praise be to God. I thank you for tuning in today. I just believe that you're going to learn something. If anything, you can get in the Word and and look up that word chastisement and see what he, all the scriptures that he had, because there's a lot of them, I tell you, in, in the word of God that you can turn to and find out what is, uh, what you can do to help yourself and be chastised by him. Always remember in his presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Joining us today for In His Presence, you can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email her at JeannieCaldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet In His Presence.